I think that the risk managers at some of the bigger banks uh, who have traded the futures markets pretty aggressively uh, probably came reasonably close to having a religious experience. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcade Economics. And today, just a quick video highlighting a quote from Rick Rule about silver manipulation. This was an interview he did with Keith Newmeyer on Dunnigan Kaiser's Reluctant Preppers show. Looks like it's reposted on the First Majestic Silver channel as well. And I thought that what Rick shared here talked about a lot of the things that have been happening in the paper markets in silver. And certainly since he is, well, I know he's somewhat retiring now, but heavily involved with the Sprott PSLV Trust, or I don't know how heavily he is directly involved, but um, has insight and access to that. So I will share what he had to say here. Utility. Uh, I wholly agree with Keith that the structure of the silver market uh, is uh, to be charitable, mostly unexplainable. The idea that the futures market can trade 250 times the supply available for good delivery in a day mm -hmm. uh, strikes me as an odd market. Uh, one where the derivatives in the futures market drives the physical price rather than being based on this physical price. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a very big tail that's wagging the dog. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that uh, I think has likely happened in the last month with the democratization of the silver narrative um, has been, uh, I think that the risk managers at some of the bigger banks uh, who have traded the futures markets pretty aggressively uh, probably came reasonably close to having a religious experience. Uh, and I suspect that the silver market in the future will be somewhat more in balance, which is to say that uh, you know, the, the, the futures market will be more related to the physical market. Certainly, you know, a circumstance where you see very large sales of physical silver or physical gold during periods of a 24 hour day where demand is least strong. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not a conspiratorialist, uh, but that activity didn't take place to maximize somebody's return on their physical silver. It took place to uh, manipulate the only word you can say, uh, the futures contract. Somebody established uh, a laddered uh, long or short position in the futures market, and they acted in the physical market, uh, selling maybe 40 or $50 million worth of metal, uh, against a billion and a half or $2 billion position in the futures market. It happens in LIBOR, it happens in treasuries. But the idea that those people got uh, surprised by a million kids on Reddit a couple of weeks ago, were I the risk manager for a large bank, uh, that would give me cause for concern. Uh, a market that trades in a day uh, 250 times the supply of metal available for good delivery over a year uh, is a market that's much more prone to risk than people generally recognize. I, I think too, uh, if you believe as I believe that metals trade contrary to real yields, the fact that we've had a 40 year bull market in bonds where the yield has fallen from 15.6 to now 1.5 in the US uh, tenure, doesn't mean the yield can't go over. But what it says is that yield trade, which depressed prices metals, is much closer to the end than to the beginning. Uh, and that has to weigh on the risk manager's mind too. You didn't need to manipulate precious metals prices down for the last 40 years because the market was doing it for you. That party's come to a screeching halt, I think. So there you go. I'll just leave that at that. And that is Rick's views on the silver market. I agree with pretty much everything he was saying there. So just wanted to pass that along. Again, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you will stay posted on everything that is happening in silver as soon as it happens. With that said, thanks again. Hope you're having a great day out there and I'll be back with you later.